Howdy folks, and welcome to episode three of my old school RuneScape playthrough. In this video, I'm going to continue with the plan from last episode to work on the Priest in Peril side quest. That's going to get me access to Mauritania and the Rooftop Agility course. Um, I'll let you see how that turns out. I'm not going to spoil what we end up doing. Do you want to mention it takes me quite a while to add the fast forward to these videos after I record them. So at the time I'm recording this preamble here, I'm already decently far ahead of where I am in this video. So live split timer says 16 hours. The real lot number is a little bit larger than that. Uh, and up to this point, you may have noticed that I hit mute a little early when I'm talking sometimes. So when the fast forward happens, it clips my last word. I'm working on that. It's uh, I, I have to be really careful about when I activate and deactivate mute on the microphone to get things to work. Um, I don't want to spoil anything upcoming, but on the technical side, at least, you're going to be seeing a visual improvement within the next couple episodes. I think it's either episode four or episode five, where I finally decide to stop using OpenGL for scaling, and I switch to just doing it through Windows 10. Um, you basically have to reconfigure your entire desktop in order to get the UI in this game to look good, because it has no true um, full screen mode. So you have to like go into the Windows setting and set the, the zoom scaling to like 125 or 150. And now that I've been doing this, I'm starting to see that I totally get why so many YouTubers and streamers use such a giant UI for this game, because otherwise it can be pretty hard to read. I think it's it's legible uh, in these videos, but soon it's going to get better, is what I'm saying. All right, and before we start episode three, just a quick reminder, again, this is a blind playthrough of an MMO. I am recording literally every second I play. I have never booted this game up without hitting record on OBS, and I've never cut anything from any of these videos. That means you're going to hear my stream of consciousness on a lot of subjects, and I'm going to be wrong a lot of the time, or I'm just going to wildly underestimate just how brutal a grind something's going to be. So if I declare in this video or a future video, well, I plan to do this, and then this, and then this, and then this, it's possible, it might even be certain, that those plans are going to change later as I learn more about how the game works. So if I say here, oh, I'm totally going to get Agility 99 by next session, don't freak out and think that I actually that that's going to happen or I'm going to try to push for that. Obviously, it's not going to. Anyway, I hope you enjoy this one, and uh, we'll talk to you again in the next video. Bye. Hey, folks, we are back with more Old School RuneScape. Current project is to finish getting combat skills up to 20, namely attack, strength, and defense. Once we have combat skills to 20, I might be able to fight the dog that's going to let me get into Mauritania. And the reason I want to get into Mauritania is to do a uh, athletics course that's inside there in a town called Canifus. So as usual, we'll be fast forwarding through the boring parts and I'll slow it down whenever I have things to say. So I feel pretty good with how we've been doing with chickens. I feel like I've got enough feathers to last a really long time. I kind of want enemies to have more health so that I can skill up for longer. So I think we're going to try cows. Uh, hides might be a problem, but I might have enough agility to run to the bank and back without it breaking the bank. So we're going to see how cows do. We might change strategy. Also, defense 12. Nice. So it's kind of interesting, the way I edit these right now is the uh, VOD, when I load it into um, my video editing software, I can see the audio waveform, and since I have the game audio way quieter than my mic, and because I stay muted whenever I'm not talking, I can just kind of look for spikes in the waveform to know whether it's a time to slow down or not, which is really convenient, I don't have to like maintain timestamps or anything. But combat, oh hey, hit points 18, fantastic. Combat is a little bit more complicated because every time you hear that loud cling noise, it makes a tiny spike. Still not as loud as my voice, but I can definitely, I, I can look at a section and know whether I was doing combat or doing agility, for example. Back to business. Wow, defense 13. Cows are faster than... quite a bit faster than uh, chickens. I think it they've maybe become faster, or maybe they've always been faster. They feel faster because of the number of times I'm able to get full XP for a 
two damage hit or a three damage hit. I think it was what I was saying earlier that, like, if you've already done two damage to a chicken, you can no longer do two or three damage to it and get the XP. Like you can do a maximum of one. So I guess the higher the max hit points of an enemy, the better. Someone may have said that when I was streaming this, but I didn't really grok it until now. It's okay, we'll consider all the chicken grinding, even though it was slower and less efficient, we'll consider it a uh, investment in fletching for the future. Because we ended up getting like thousands of feathers. Should be good on feathers for a minute. I'm going to have to decide how I'm going to go about cooking here. Half my inventory is going to be meat, half of it's going to be leather or hides. I have to kind of walk across the street to go cook now. So I don't want to have to make a fire because that involves more inventory slots. So at some point I'll just run back and bank the hides. Repeat. Twenty-nine cooking. Okay. We get green mince ale, mud pie, cheese, and tomato batas. Yeah, so this is where it gets complicated, where it's like, I can probably justify one more trip to cook meat if half of my remaining inventory is meat, half of my remaining inventory is hides, but at some point it's too long of a walk and I should just pick up hides until I fill up, leave the meat on the ground, and then uh, walk back to town, so. We'll play around with it and see what makes sense. This also doesn't really make that big of a difference, but it's interesting that cows don't drop bones as their first slot, so if you're just spam clicking, you can't get the bones, consume them, and then replace them with something. You might have to right click the stack and select the right item. That's defense 14. One more defense level. I think I'm actually going to do strength next. Uh, even though I've been doing attack, strength, defense, strength is going to increase my overall rate of leveling up. My accuracy is actually pretty good, at least against cows right now. And then once we get everything to 20, we'll see if that's enough to just progress that quest to get to Mauritania. If not, I might do a little bit of research and see if there's a better thing to fight than cows at that point. Oh, I didn't know these things dropped clue scrolls. I wasn't getting those from uh, chickens. That's the deal. Grab me at the ground. Who knows where it's found? Looking for you, a man called Reldo may have a crew. Place a strange device in your inventory. Obtain one from Reldo marked on the map if necessary. Looks like it's actually somewhere in Varrock, which I can go to, so I might try to do that later. I'm not going to stress about it right now. I think we discussed in the... <clears throat> stream that I don't mind using OS Buddy to solve the clue scrolls because it seems like it's something that I just have to Google anyway. Like, maybe if I was already super familiar with the game and knew all the NPCs and locations. I feel like puzzles look better kind of unfortunate. It's almost impossible for players to get the intended experience. Unless if you're like a puzzle solver when the thing comes out, right? There's mechanics like that in World of Warcraft. Um, they do like a crazy secret hunters thing every expansion, and it's really it's just the first group of people who actually figure it out on the Discord or whatever, and then everyone else just reads a guide and does it. Trying out using a prayer here for at least part of farming. I'm still not super clear on the best use case for prayers. They might just be something that you use for like a difficult boss fight or an enemy that's otherwise out of your range temporarily. So I'm the impression that prayers only really regenerate when you return to an altar in town. But we'll see. Hey, defense 15. What a treat. We're under prayer points. You can recharge an altar. Come out of inventory space. Let's do the bones first. God. All right, let's go deposit stuff, including this clue scroll. We'll do it next time we find ourselves in Virak.
All right, back to cow stabbing. We just hit for four. Because I think I did. I'll watch again. If I did hit for four, that tells me uh, I should have been doing cows a while ago. I was never able to hit for four on chickens, right? My main thing earlier is that I was struggling to understand why it, it felt like you were incentivized to fight the weakest possible enemies to scale your stats because it didn't matter if you were fighting a cow or an on-level enemy. But now I see that it's kind of elegant that you want to fight enemies that have lots of health so you can do more damage, so you can get more XP per swing. Because it's really like XP per time tick is what you're thinking about in this game. It's not XP per kill like it is in a lot of other MMOs. Kind of cool. Our strength 16, very cool. Kind of enjoying uh, managing my inventory while I'm fighting too, and trying to like time the bones bearing during an animation so that it doesn't take up another animation. I don't think it actually is faster or slower either way. Feels like it is though. I like animation canceling, regardless. So, I think when I get to 30 cooking, I'm going to stop cooking basic beef and chicken. I'm getting about 2% per beef. Let's see. 2% per chicken. Because with chicken, it was basically free, because I didn't have to run very far to get to the place to cook it. Um, but it spent stamina for me to run over there. Yeah, I think I think having 30 cooking will be pretty solid. And then I'll worry later about finding something else to level cooking in the future. It's kind of a waste that I'm leaving the beef behind, I guess, but I'm really here for the cowhide and for the the skill ups more than anything, right? I think I'm also only going to go cook meat on my first trip when I have a full half of my inventory able to devote to it, rather than go the second time with a smaller set of meat. So I don't think that will quite get me to 30 cooking on my next pass, but maybe the pass after that. I guess if it doesn't on my next pass, I'll just kill some chickens outside until I get it, get it over with. Hey, that looks like 19 hit points. Really cool. I'm not even really thinking about leveling up hit points in the process of this, but it seems like it's doing a pretty good job of keeping pace or staying ahead of my three core combat skills. I think it also contributes to my value here. Yeah, that's cool. Oh, and there's strength 17, basically back to back. I'm about to get prayer too, right? Prayer 19. Which I think unlocks a new prayer for me, right? Rapid restore. Restore rate for stats except hit points and prayer. So I guess that's like for debuffs that reduce your stats. Like maybe when I was getting drunk earlier. Anyway, cool. As you run back here, I feel like I need to get a better understanding of the different stances. And obviously they change the which XP you're gaining. I heard people describe it as certain enemies are weak against certain stances. But I guess I'm interpreting it more as like, you know, turning on block kind of effectively increases your defense skill while it's on. Turning on slash effectively increases your strength skill. Chop effectively increases attack across the board. Now that might not actually be correct, I'm not sure. But that's kind of how I'm trying to understand it at the moment. Get my prayer back here. I think I'm right about prayer. I mean, maybe you eventually get uh, stuff that lets you regenerate prayer points outside of altars, but I think it's meant to be for, like, oh shit encounters. Like, I, I will probably use prayers when I go to fight this dog, because I don't think I'll be quite level 30. I'll be a little bit under it. I'll have to bring some food with me. Hope it works out. So it's good to know with my current rate of agener uh, agility regeneration or stamina or energy regeneration that if I start with 97 from the cows, I pretty much just barely make it to the bank. 
Granted, it's because I've got a full inventory of stuff, but... I was thinking about depositing my coins. Well... Yeah, I'm really not spending them on anything. I may as well. If I were had any chance of needing to use them... Because I was worried there might be like a random event that required coins, but so far all the random events have generated coins. Also, interacting with this bank is hell. Part of it's because of where people are standing in it. Okay, back to cow murdering. I think goblins have more interesting loot tables, but they don't drop something that I can use for crafting every time they die, so I will not be focusing them. So the dream eventually is to find an enemy that drops a crafting material or some kind of material that I can use to skill something else up and also has an interesting drop table with very rare drops. One day. At least we can get clue scrolls from cows, it's new. Strength 18. What a treat. I don't know, maybe I'm convincing myself of an urban legend, but I feel like I can weave bone burying into the block animation and finish the fight faster. That might be crazy, though. In any case, it's a fun thing to do to try to kind of optimize to the extent you can optimize in this game. Okay, I'm gonna knock out cooking real quick, getting cooking 30. I need to get like four chicken meats. I'm just gonna murder some chickens real fast. No problem. Cooking 30. Wonderful. Alright, going forward I'm just going to ignore meat drops until we get 20 and everything. I think it's going to be less than 2% per uh, item at this point. Which is fine, it's like 50 items for a skill up, but with the distance I have to run I don't think it's worth it anymore. It's really interesting that like the stat meter measures strength, attack, defense. I guess defense is in actions left, but strength is in kills left, which I don't think kills are relevant, right? It's just how much damage you deal. So you couldn't really call it actions, which you can say damage left. I don't know. Strength 19, get. Maybe kills left is an estimate based on the monsters you've been killing, and maybe it was doing a poor job of estimating before with the uh, chickens, because I was over damaging them so much. That's my current guess. We'll see, I'll keep playing around with it. Alright, time to head back. Oh, must be one of those weird drops. Chef's hat. Cool beans. Because it's a uh, fashion scape, I assume, right? Strength 20. Also, shoot, I was, uh... <laughs> left my... Mic open for a second there, I'll go back and edit it out. Now that strength is at 20, let's do attack 20 and then finally defense 20, and then we'll go try to do this quest. Nice! Hit points 20. Nice round number. 
We don't get higher than that in the process of taking attack and defense to 20. I will be very happy and fine with that. We might get to 21, though. Looks so like we get 541. Yeah, we might we might get 21. We'll see. It would be just the greatest if we got uh, prayer to 22, 20 as well. We just look so clean on this menu to have so many skills above 20. I don't know if we will. I guess we'll see. Attack 16. Nice. Excellent. Attack 17. Three to go. Like that's attack 18, just two more, and then we just got to wrap up defense. Very nice attack 19. One more to 20. No, I'm starting to think uh, before we go attempt this fight, let's see. I'm guessing I'll be around combat level 25 once I finish this project, maybe a little bit higher. The enemy's level 30. I might want to look into getting the new equipment that getting attack and strength and defense to 20 will afford me. Um, I still feel a little bit icky buying things on the Grand Exchange and even buying basic gear from shops. I kind of like the idea of earning it for myself, so I'm not going to set it as an, uh, an official like account restriction that I won't use the Grand Exchange to buy gear or buy skill up items. Uh, but I want to like really think hard about it and come up with a good reason why I would do it instead of skilling up. So we'll see. I, I want to get back to agility training as soon as possible because the stuff that I want to do to um, the stuff that I would need to do to earn my own like set of gear for being level 20 strength and attack is stuff that would probably be improved by higher agility. Like it would be easier to mine and easier to smelt and easier to smith if I could run more often. So I might make an exception here and see if I can buy a cheap set of basic gear with the gold that I made. Uh, for level 20, but then after this, once I've got my agility capped, I wouldn't mind like trying to focus on earning stuff from that point forward. We'll see. I don't know how much of a hassle it is to um, to craft, for example. We're still only at crafting level 1. At some point, we're probably going to tan all these hides. We just have to figure out how that works. Hit points 21 on a goblin. Very cool. We're probably gonna get um probably gonna get prayer 20 soon. It looks like prayer 22 seems kind of important. I've been noticing that my hit points are slowly dropping, that the cows have a just a high enough accuracy. They occasionally slip through and do some damage to me. I don't think I'm at risk of dying. I guess worst case I could bring some meat over and heal that way. Um Let's cook a couple things really quickly. I'm also hoping that we're going to hit 20 attack before it becomes a problem, then when I'm in a defensive stance with blocking that they'll stop hitting me quite as much. Anyway, I'm looking to get 22 prayer because the thing that, for rapid heal seems like it's convenient for these extended farming sessions without having to take a break to go grab food, you know, or clutter your inventory with food. Thank <laughs> you. 
There's that magical attack 20. I think having attack 20 and strength 20 is kind of a big deal. If I recall correctly, it unlocks quite a few things. Look at the guide here. I think I have to not be in combat to read it. I get mithril weapons. It's less of a big deal than I thought, but still. Mithril might be fun. Uh, Rune Halberd with 40 attack. I could do a Mithril Halberd now. I guess that's that's sort of special. That's okay. I'll try to get a Mithril Scimitar, I think. I'll look into it. Maybe I'll check the Grand Exchange. Oh, you know, I think I've got a tool in here that lets me look up stuff. Give me one second. So Scimitar is a... Oh, the Idol Alerter. I don't think I want that. i figure out how to turn that off later. Oof. Especially with the annoying Windows sound. Alright, it looks like a Mithril Scimitar is fairly cheap at just like 400 GP on the auction house. So let's see if I can turn that off. I'm not fighting, I'm going to stop scaling. Huh. No, absolutely not. I do not want that. Right, we need to switch to defense, my bad. Actually, if I can go get that Mithril Scimitar now, that might speed this up if it's having me do more damage to these cows and they die faster. It might make a quick pit stop in Varrock real quick. Let's see, how am I doing on cow hides? Maybe I could wait until I fill my inventory. Hey, prayer level 20. Very nice. No, I'm not going to wait. Let's just go ahead and go. I want to see if I can pick up a Mithril Scimitar. I might preemptively grab Mithril Armor. And we'll see how that goes. Really excited for that fence jump shortcut, but struggling to make it happen. We're kind of in the future. I might look into attacking one of those bronze or uh, dark wizards on my way out. I have no idea what to expect. I haven't fought them before. This has me curious. Let's you stray shape <laughs> shoo away stray dogs. It doesn't let you pet them. Unplayable garbage. I recall correctly, I think my clue scroll is here in Verox. So maybe I'll pull that out of the um, put it out of the bank and see if I can do it. If I understand what it is. Howdy folks, cutting in here with a quick edit. Um, while I was editing this video, I noticed that I made a really big decision at the Grand Exchange and didn't actually talk about it. Uh, I was muted during this because I was on a phone call, and I think the phone call kind of threw me off my rhythm because when I came back, I just forgot to mention this big thing that I had done. Also, you'll notice that for a few dozen minutes or so after the phone call, uh, the live split timer doesn't go. I press the button to start it, but it must not have been in focus or something like that. I, I do catch that. Uh, like 20 or 30 minutes later and fix it, so don't worry. Okay, here's the decision I made. I decided to go ahead and buy some Mithril Armor and a Mithril Scimitar on the Grand Exchange. Now, you might remember in the first video I said I wanted to try a mini Iron Man, or what I call the Tin Man playstyle. Uh, so instead of having an official Iron Man character, we're simply going to try to avoid buying frivolous things on the Grand Exchange, making frivolous purchases with the Grand Exchange. Uh, if we do go to buy something, we want to be able to give some sort of rationale for why we're doing it, um, why I'm philosophically okay with one purchase versus another. So as a general rule, for me anyway, if an item can be obtained trivially, like if it's found in shops or if it can be found laying on the ground in easy-to-reach areas, then I'm fine with buying it on the Grand Exchange. It's a mild convenience. Um, I'm also fine with buying minor consumables and runes on the Grand Exchange because, you know, even if I eventually level herb lore and rune crafting, uh, well, I'm definitely going to level herb lore and rune crafting eventually. I'm always going to want consumables. I'm always going to want 
runes. So buying them now doesn't mean that I'm going to skip those skills later. And that brings me to the basic philosophical question that I want to ask. If I buy this item, will that mean that I will skip significant content? So the best example I can give of that is I really would not want to buy an item that a monster drops very rarely. There's one enemy in the game that has a 1 in 500 chance of dropping a rare item, and there's no other way to get that item. I feel like buying it on the Grand Exchange means skipping a lot of interesting content. It would be fun to watch me try to grind for that thing. So I definitely want to rule out buying that sort of thing. Crafted gear, I also generally want to avoid because I feel like buying the gear means that you're not crafting it, means that you're not experiencing the crafting system. Um, and I could see if you just bought all of your gear sets, you might say, I'm not gonna even going to touch smithing. Why would I bother? Leveling smithing is not going to help me level any other skills. So I want to be careful with that. So all of that said here, I go ahead and I buy a mithril armor and a mithril scimitar. So what is the idea? What, why do I do this? Okay, I do want to level up smithing, but when I started looking into mithril gear, it looks like some pieces of mithril gear require a smithing stat as high as 68, which is nuts because the defense stat you need to equip mithril gear is like 20. Did not know that. Okay. I would be very happy to push smithing that high to get it to like 68, even though that seems like an insane grind. But at this stage in the playthrough, as I've said repeatedly, the whole reason I'm grinding agility is to make gathering and crafting easier and more fun later on. So if I'm at an agility roadblock like I am here with the Canopus agility course, it doesn't really make sense for me to stop agility to level smithing to a ridiculously high level just to make my own set of gear to get back to agility, because by that point, mining and smithing are going to end up being so high that we're not really going to benefit from that agility anyway. I'm not going to get that extra fun from having more energy and you know, more ability to get around. So here's the plan. The plan is, uh, I'm thinking about it as I'm borrowing the mithril equipment from future Marstead. Like, if you remember in Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure, there's a scene, they've got this time machine, and they, they just say out loud, after the report, after we finish our task, we'll go back and we'll put my dad's keys behind this sign. And then they look behind the sign and there are the keys, right? They just declare it and then they fulfill it later. So for me, after the report, after the task is going to be after I finish my immediate goals, those goals are getting agility to whatever I would call soft cap. I don't know what that is yet. And getting magic to a high enough level that I can teleport to a lot of places. After I complete those things, I promise that I will go back and I will do it. I will earn it for real. I'll do it for real. Um, so I'm going to commit to prioritizing mining and smithing all the way to the minimum level required to create the mithril scimitar and the mithril armor that I'm buying right now. Uh, so I think, again, that would be after soft capping agility, after reaching a high enough magic level that I can teleport to a lot of places. In the meantime, though, I'm going to try to use the mithril gear sparingly, pretty much just in the service of finishing agility and magic maybe here and there to get me past some difficult sections if I need to like run through an area and don't want to get nuked by the enemies nearby. So I think getting smithing to 68 is going to be way more fun for me if I've got this high agility and all these teleport spells. That's the whole reason I'm trying to plan for it. So I don't mind focusing on something like that right away after I finish magic and agility. Uh, and that's the plan. We're going to be borrowing the gear for now to make it a little easier to actually earn the gear later. And the, the, the thesis, the main point, is we will not be skipping the smithing content or the mining content involved in reaching and creating our own mithril equipment. Back to the video. Thank you. Enjoy. We'll take a break from this for a moment before we do the clue scroll. Talk on the phone. We'll get back in a bit. Hi, folks. Uh, just got back as a phone call with my wife. She's out of town in Las Vegas for work. And normally it would be a fine time to keep doing RuneScape, but since I do want to provide a little bit of commentary here and there, I figured I may as well just shut it down. The reasons are doing complicated stuff like clue scrolls, so let's go ahead and do the complicated clue scroll stuff. Let's see what happens when I talk to this person. That's real, though. Ask you for help with something. You show relatively your screws. You know about hot and cold clues? No, I don't. It's a strange device to tell you how far away you are from the location you need to be. You get your destination, you dig. And use this strange device to fill where your destination is and dig. Hands you the strange device. Oh. Feel strange device. Device is warm. So 
I need to get a spade, I guess. I guess I can just call it a spade. Let's see if my other stuff bought, and then we'll try to get a spade, and then we'll try to do this. Lucky day, I already had a spade. Fantastic. Plate skirt I bought for the amount that I offered, so that's exciting. I need to save up some money to be able to afford the boots as well. And I'll see <coughs> if the chest ends up paying off or not. Who knows? Warm and warmer than last time. Colder than last time. This is kind of cool. It's my favorite all-time Final Fantasy mini game, right? Hot and warmer than last time. Chocobo hot and cold. Same temperature as last time. Colder than last time. Colder? Very hot. This is exciting. Colder than last time. Same temperature. Hopefully it's not across the river, right? Hey, I bought the plate body. That's exciting. Incredibly hot. Probably across the river. Alright. Oh, it's not too bad. There's a bridge up here. Another barbarian place, it looks like. Oh, I ran out of run speed. Okay. Colder. wonder how precise it is. I hope it's not inside these gates. I think it is, in fact, inside the gates. Okay. See if I can fit in around it. It's a trainer manor. I don't think there's like a shortcut anywhere to get in. I don't know if I can fit her through this corner. It's about to find out. I can, just barely. There's like an ambient effect in this game that sounds like static and my headphones occasionally has static. It's freaking me out. I might be able to turn it off, let me see. Or at least turn it way down. Very hot. So we gotta get in there and then go all the way around, which is probably fine. Fine whoops out on a taxi. Spooky. Hopefully I can't spawn inside the building. I noticed the hanging place. Is it here? Nope. Visibly shaking and burns to the touch. You found a new clue. Oh, that's cool. Clap at Bob's brilliant axes. Equip a bronze axe and leather boots. Oh, it's in Lumbridge. I think I have both of those things, too. Sweet. Okay, let's teleport home then. Well, how close am I? Eh, I'll teleport. I'm lazy. You got the items they specified. Should be able to do no problem. Oh, I should have stopped in Varric and grabbed the suit. Oh well, I'll go there when I get to level 10 defense, which is going to take a while. No big time loss. I don't know what this 100 weapon thing is. Don't watch for that. Okay, so we said bronze axe, leather boots, which I might actually already have equipped right now. Gardening boots. Leather boots. I shouldn't have the gardening boots because the leather ones are better, I think. Whoops, that was a mistake. Coins, deposit, deposit, deposit. Nothing interesting in these sacks. Down the stairs. It says I have to clap, which I think is what that icon is. Yes, no bow, wave, think, back and laugh, jump for joy, yawn, head, big spin. Do I need to unlock clap? Uh oh. Put up, sit up, scared, rabbit hop, slap head, flap, idea, mean, glass wall, bow, salute, oh, clap. We have to do it in order, let's see. Clap, bronze axe, leather boots. Give me a quest. Get your own. <laughs> Maybe I need to have nothing else equipped. Let's see. Hmm. Weird. This is definitely the place. Very Rini and Vera. Oh, there we go. Reward casket. Maybe it's some of that NPC and they gave me this. Law rune, bronze arrow, staff of earth. That's cool. 1792 coins. Okay. Oh, and it goes in my inventory at the end. The main advantage of the Staff of Earth is it Earth runes cost nothing, or are basically free while it's equipped. Well, that's fun. Glad I did a clue. I guess I must have spawned that NPC at some point. And after spawning them, that's when I should have just been done. Make sure the leather gloves actually have stats. Okay, they do. I'm gonna go put this other stuff back, and then we're gonna go back to Cow Murder. That'll be great. So I'll have to remember that for the future, that whenever you do a task, sometimes it might spawn an NPC, or maybe you need to talk to an NPC afterward to get your reward. Makes sense.
Really excited to see how the Smithril Scimitar pays off for me. I don't know if getting an upgraded weapon is mostly something that increases your, like, uh, your accuracy, or if it can increase your damage as well, or what the deal is, but still a neat concept. Let me go ahead and reset all these guys. Reset you. And we'll get moving. I'm trying to get defense to 20. I can try to equip my new set of armor. Then we'll go see if we can fight this uh, this dog and get back on the agility train. Ah, shoot. I apparently forgot to start the timer. Um, I will manually calculate it and then get it running. I guess you're pretty much just watching clue scrolls before that, so... That's pretty close to the right time. Recording for like 17 minutes or so. It's possible I'll forget to do that in the future. I'll try to keep an eye on it. I think I hit go and didn't take or it was focused on the wrong monitor or something. Technically use the same mouse and keyboard for both my gaming PC and my streaming slash recording PC, so... If the mouse isn't in the right window, then the keyboard will send the command to the wrong computer, if that makes sense. All right, let's do this. Defense 16. Also, it looks like the way this works is it makes me more likely to hit the top end of my possible damage. Maybe that's what it is. So I don't think I've ever hit for five, but I'm hitting for like two, three, and four a lot more often, I feel like. Yeah, this is crazy fast now. Um, <laughs> I feel like I probably should have upgraded my sword when I got to attack 10. What was the last opportunity I had? How, how much, how bad should I feel, basically? Could have had a steel, an iron, a black, or a white sword up through now, so it probably would have sped things up a little bit. Just, just a hair. That's okay, we did it now. Part of the game is doing it wrong and then going, oh, I did it wrong. I won't make that mistake again. I think cows are still correct, so I don't do more than their max health or come close to doing more than their max health. So we're thinking about it in the future, though. Defense 17 and a clue scroll. I guess I, was saying, I wonder if the clue scroll uses up the same slot as the bones. I don't think it does. Wow, I got the exact same clue scroll. I wonder if it's just uh, well, cows only drop that one or something because it's very simple. I'm not in a hurry to do that one, I just wanted to do my first ever one, so I'll deposit it and maybe do it later. Once I have more agility... I feel like shameful inefficiencies are going to be a pretty core part of this blind playthrough, like me not upgrading my sword until I got to attack 20. So that's comes with being blind and not just looking up the most efficient way to level this skill. I'll just keep telling myself that to feel better about it. It's fine. But I think that learning to master an MMO is by far the most fun part of it. If you have someone just tell you, I'll just do this, you don't experience the game in different ways, right? You don't get that rush of, wow, this is way faster, this is way better. Yeah, the more I think about it, the whole you can't overkill enemies concept is super genius. Hey, 18 defense. Snuck right up on me. Very cool. Didn't realize I was that close when I got the last cowhide last time. Um, the whole you can't overkill enemies is very genius. Let's you continue to fight cows as long as you want, but it kind of makes more powerful enemies more efficient by default. It's best of all worlds, basically. Hey! Hit points 22. Very cool. Very cool indeed. I was not expecting to even get... Defense 19, one more, and we're good to go back to the original plan. So 
So I'm close to full inventory, but I'm also very close to 20 defense. So I'm just going to kill some uh, goblins. Maybe we'll get a cool or unusual drop from them. See what happens. There's defense 20. Man, that feels really good. Let's look at those, look at those stats. 20 attack, 20 strength, 20 defense, 22 hit points, and 20 prayer. Oh, gotta do magic at some point. That was, when do I get portals? Curse, wind bolt, bananas, I don't know. Well, alchemy is probably good. Verok teleport. That sounds great. If I can just keep the runes for it in my bank. All right, we gotta go to Verok to pick up my suit of armor. Verok's on the way to Mauritania anyway, so. What's a chicken doing all the way up here? Jump over the fence. It's gonna be great. Fighting the wizards was a bad idea. Got it. Lesson learned. I was like, I bet I could try it. Yeah, they're like level 7. Well, I'm level 26. This will be fine. Maybe some of them are different levels than others. I didn't notice. It's fine. We're fine. It's fine. Everything's fine. Oh, I see. It looks like having armor can make you weak against magic. Clever. Okay. So if you want different kinds of armor for different sorts of content, I guess that makes sense. Oh, I understand. It makes me worse at magic and range attacking. Some of them make me worse at receiving magic damage. Looks like they all do. Okay, I understand now. Gotcha. So if you're going to do magic, you don't want to wear heavy armor. Okay, I think we're going to roll with this for now. At some point, I'm going to go to the tree gnome place and try to pick up all those frog legs that were worth a bunch of money. Let's see how many I can farm. Probably better stuff that I can collect, but... In the meantime, let us go to Mauritania and try to do this quest, see what happens. Weight's 23 kilograms. It's quite a bit more than zero. So that makes stamina regen pretty slowly. Hopefully the dog isn't a magic dog. We'll see. Glad I decided to attack this bat in a way. I'm like, I must I feel like I'm forgetting something. Oh yeah, I'm forgetting something. Forgetting food. Let's go back and first heal the full and then bring a stack of food with us. All right, that's better. Let's try it now. Oh, let me uh, top off first, actually. I'm not sure if there are like healer NPCs that can fill you up or this is the best way to top off. Three kilograms worth of chicken. Let's go do it. All right, let's do it. Grinded for several hours to make this happen. Just to be able to go grind more. That other stuff. This feels really good. When I first came here, this thing was like, a, it's gonna one-shot me. Classic MMO, see a thing, can't handle it, come back later. It's all worth it in the end. Well, the attacks are almost in sync with the song for a second there. This is going great. Could not ask for it to go better. Wonder if me having it in defensive mode is helping me to not get wrecked. Okay, I finally took some damage. May have overdone it on the chickens. Probably still well, I guess I technically probably didn't need to heal and I still would have won, but I had no way of knowing that, so. Oh. Nice. Very cool. Let's see if that adds that to the quest log. Priest in peril, right? Tell King World everything's fine with Dreswell now. I've killed that dog for him and claim my reward. Cool. Super cool. I wonder if I turn off OpenGL if that'll fix those windows. It does. I wonder why it causes that. Oh no. Uh, I guess it's when you move it, maybe? Oh, let me take a look. Now you see the animation tweeting, sky color. Eh. 
It's a mild issue. It's only certain textures that do it. Killed that dog for you. Really? Hey, that's great. Thanks a lot, buddy. Ha 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 ha. Just so grateful to you. I should go tell the king what a great job you did, buddy. Hmm. Something's, something's fishy. Something's rotten on the planet Wormulon. Alright, we'll go back to the king. Alright, how does the king feel about my decisions? What do you want? You have news of Drezzel? The guys at the temple and they said they were being bothered by that dog in the crypt, so I went and killed it for them. No problem. I hope the dog wasn't Drezzel. You did what? You mentally deficient? The guard dog was protecting their route to Boratania. Without it, we could be in severe peril of attack. Did I make a mistake? Yes, you did. You need to get there right now and find out what's happening before it's too late for us all. Drizzle told me to. No, you absolute cr- <laughs> Obviously, some fiend has done something to Drizzle and tricked your feeble intellect into helping them kill that guard dog. And I notice the guard dog doesn't aggro you. Back there and do whatever is necessary to safeguard my number of attack, or else you'll be headed for high treason. It's a hell of a quest. I like it. There's evil monks in here. Let's see. Let's turn to the temple, find out what happened to the real Drezzle, or the king will have me executed. Let me try attacking the monks and see what happens. So hopefully they don't use a bunch of magic. I use some magic. Bones. So I still have food. Maybe they're not aggering me because I, uh, my level is high enough. Open coffin. I think Alive is inside it. Wouldn't be a good idea to open it. Oh, is this him? Drezzle. Hey, man. What's up? Open cell door. Oh, don't tell me I need lock picking to get in there. I guess I could... Wouldn't mind grinding thievery for a bit. It seems fun. I wonder if these guys dropped the key ever, though. Alright, I'll fight them for a little bit, and then I'll Google it. Priest in peril. Kind of a cool twist. This guy is hitting me a bit. Kill one of the 30 monks, level 30 monks of Zamorak to get a golden key. Okay. So it's not this guy. There's gonna be another one that's level 30 around here somewhere. So I may as well use prayer since there's one downstairs, right? Let's go for the attack one, actually. Get him! Ah, oh, monk top. That's kind of cool. Huh. Should use that whenever I do magic later. Magic attack bonus. Prayer plus three. I think prayers are active uh, even when you're not actively attacking, which is kind of a bummer. Oh, I see. They're not scripted to attack immediately. Because they're higher level than me. This guy's quite a bit harder than the dog. Got it. Come on, keep attacking him. Oh shit, I see what's happening. Oh, we were super close to. Turn the prayers off. Refill it. Bury the bones. That's cool though. I like it. This must be the priest in peril. Similar size to the lock, but does not fit. Talk through cell door. Hello. And remember about right-clicking doors. I got stuck there with knocking as well. You're one of those Zamorakians who prison me here. Who are you and why are you here? You all sent me to find out what's going on at the temple. Take it your dressel? Praise be to Sarah Doman. All is not yet lost. But Mistelin. Desecrate the Holy River Sav. It'll be defenseless against Mauritania. How is a river a good defense? It's a long tale. I'm sure we don't have time. Tell me anyway. Sarah Doman. Sarah Doman has granted you wisdom. Sarah the River Sav. How it protects a Mistelin. Story of this temple. The seven warrior priests who died here long ago, from whom I am descended. Once long ago, Mistelin did not have the borders that it currently does. This entire area as far west as Zerok itself is under the control of an evil god. Frequent skirmishing along the borders as the brave heroes of Zerok fought to keep the evil creatures that are now trapped on the eastern side of the river side from overrunning the human camps. I didn't realize that Mauritania was like an evil world. That's kind of cool, our evil continent. God appeared to one of my heroes, even though forgotten by history. I should be able to make the, take the pass the temple now stands in. He's his power to bless the river and make it impassable to all creatures with evil in their hearts. So it's kind of like the wall in Song of and Fire. Made a final stand, the enemy swarmed across the side, but they did not yield. 
Ten days and nights they fought, never sleeping. This lore is pretty cool. On the eleventh day, they were joined by reinforcements from a neighboring encampment. But when those reinforcements arrived, they found were the bodies of those seven brave and unknown heroes, surrounded by the piles of dead creatures. It's cool. So like, thirty three hundred. Sacrifice had not been in vain, for the water of the Sav had been filled with the power of Cerodomen. Evil creatures of Martinia were trapped beyond the riverbanks forever by their own evil. In memory of their sacrifice, the ancestors built this temple, so the land would always be free of the evil creatures. Laid the bodies of those brave warriors in tombs of honor below the temple with golden gifts on the tombs as marks of respect. They also built a statue on the river mouth so that all who might try and cross in a missile from Mauritania would know that these lands are protected. The glory of Cerodomen and the good will always defeat evil, no matter how the odds are stacked against them. See how the river protects the border, but I can't see how anything could affect that from this temple. Much as it saddens me to say so, Lord Cerodomen's presence has not been felt on the land for many years, and even though all true Cerodomists, Cerodomenists, one of the watches over us, his power of the land is not as strong as it once was. The Zimraki and some pollute the Sav and desecrate his blessing. His power might not be able to stop the army of evil that lurks in the east. What do you say, Adventure? Will you aid me? Sure will. Any threat to Mislin must be neutralized immediately. Any problems? I'm trapped in the cell. I know the key to free me is nearby. Oh, I see. Did you find the key? As you may have noticed, there's a vampire in that coffin over there. I don't know how they managed to find it. It's one of the ones that somehow survived the battle here all those years ago and is by now quite mad. Trapped on the side of the river for centuries, as those fiendish Zamorakians pointed out to me with delight, as a descendant of one of those who trapped it here, I recognize the smell of my blood should I come anywhere near it. Will of course then wake up and kill me very slowly and painfully. I kill it while it is asleep. More than a wild animal. It must be extremely powerful to have survived until today. Oh, this is a really significant quest. I'm surprised. Find the key to your cell and do something about the vampire. If you've done both of those, I'll be able to inspect the damage with the Samarakians have done to the purity of the Sav. Okay. Hmm. Whoa, serious old man. Oh, this must be a random event. Would you like to come and perform on a mime show? Sure, I'd love a mime show. Copy the mime's performance, and you'll return to where you were. I don't see one. Is there a issue? Hold on. Oh, here we go. Last box will look like. No, fail, I see. Open jail is busted sometimes. Cry. Guess maybe you used to be forced into these. And now you can opt out of them when they pop up, I guess, which is interesting. Bot check. Think. <laughs> you can now use the glass box emote. Oh, that's cool. Get the emote from doing a random event. It's kind of fun. Okay. Another trap door in the dungeon. Okay. I have to go to that's what the key is for. Gotcha. I'm trying to figure out why it wasn't working, which is why I looked at the next step. I'll go ahead and go down there and see what's up. Oh, OpenGL is how I get the rescaled UI, which just makes it easier to see when I stream it. I'll try to turn it off only if I I feel like I'm not seeing something. Now the trapdoor. Can open the gate. Whoa. What's going on down here? Monuments. Cerodomen is the needle that binds our lives together. Cerodomen is a delicate touch that brushes us with love. Key that unlocks the mystery of life. Vessel that keeps us safe from harm. Spark that lights the fire in our hearts. Oh, I wonder if I need to have all these items here. Hammer that crushes evil everywhere. Light that shines throughout our lives. 
Go out and see the filthy polluted water of the riverside moving along slowly. Oh. Lock shut. Nothing interesting happens. Hmm. I wish I had a uh, spoiler free guide to this. You'd be able to ask my questions like, can I solve this puzzle without leaving this room, right? So it has to do with this. That's pretty clever. I like that. I guess the trick is that all the other monuments have something of gold on them, but the key is iron. You know to use the gold because of that. Maybe that's the key to his cell. That's the whole thing about it being the same size. Okay. I think I get it. Apparently I need a bucket, which I do not bring. So I'm gonna have to go back to Verrock and try to find one. Or buy one in the store. Again, I was expecting you could probably swap them all with a regular version of those items. I don't know what it does. Gotta go get a bucket. Get me a bucket. This is a super cool quest, though. I don't know that I could have figured it out without a guide. I maybe could figure it out if I had like people in chat who knew how it worked, giving me clues or answering questions in an unspoilery way. I feel like there's probably not a ton of demand for a spoiler-free RuneScape quest guide. In the style of like those guides where they give you progressive hints. It's cool because it's the kind of quest that like once you do it it makes perfect sense in hindsight but like you wouldn't know that you have to kill the level 30 monks to get a specific item. Sorry guard, didn't mean to hit you, it was an accident. Go away, I'm sorry. Didn't mean to. Please forgive me. Bucket. I need runes of pure essence. Huh. Okay, I have to go buy those from the store. Let me see if they sell them at the magic shop. I'm gonna stop at a bank first, I guess. I don't have a lot of money at the moment. Okay, let's deposit all this chicken. Deposit this thing. Let's see. Probably needed the free inventory space for the key. Get my money out for now. What else do we want? I go find the bucket. So there's one in the kitchen in the palace. Try to head there. Let's see if these runes are sold at the rune shop. If not, I'll check the grand exchange. I might have to sell some stuff. We'll see. Very possibly do. Fire, earth, mind, body, chaos, death. T hundred. Hmm. Because yeah, since this thing says you have to make multiple trips to the runes of pure essence, maybe they're not normal runes, like maybe they don't stack. Yeah, I might pull up the wiki entry on them so I can understand what they are at least. Pie dish. Where's the bucket though? Yeah, I'll try the general store or the grand exchange. Let's see. Buckets. Rune or pure essence? Oh, rune essence or pure essence. Oh, I see. Rune essence mine. Locked after completing the rune mysteries quest. Rune mysteries, okay. I think people were saying that unlocking that quest was hard during the live stream, so I'll see what they cost on the uh, brand exchange. If they're too much, it might be time for me to go farm frog legs in the gnome village. Okay, let's see. Uh, buy rune essence. Okay, that's not as expensive as I was worried it was going to be. Okay, but I definitely need to get some money. Pure essence. Oh, pure essence is super cheap. Let's try it again. I paid a offer pure essence. Wait, what's that? Pure essence. I don't know what the offer means. Hold on. Offer pure essence. 
Ah, it says I need 50, but they're all in the same slot, so maybe it's not that big of a deal. Or maybe they changed the way they worked to make them stack at some point and they never updated the wiki? Well, I guess I'll play around with it and see if it works. Bucket. Seven coins. Perfect. Basically free. I think that's all I need for the quest, so we'll go ahead and head back. Pure essence. Yeah, I don't know. Okay, let's go back and find out. I have a feeling this is wrong and I bought the wrong item, because the guide all it talks about needing to make multiple trips. I'm talking like this thing doesn't stack. Maybe they did like a QOL update to make it stack or something. Alright, sorry, I just gotta get out of here. Okay, so I need to get the water from the well. You know, there's no way in a million years that I would know to bring a bucket. If quests in RuneScape are like this, that's very cool. But I imagine fewer than 1% or 1% 1 of 1% of players solve them on their own. Uh, so I'll just enjoy how flavorful that is and how, like... RPG that is and go ahead and look up quests from now on on the wiki I guess I won't read super far ahead I'll let things be a spoiler or I'll let things uh, be revealed to me as we play and try not to get spoiled but I'll at least read about kill the guy to get the golden key and make sure you bring a bucket with you and a certain number of essences and stuff like that's crazy I probably would have just given up. I guess the only reason I know that I have to go through here is because I know that there's an agility course in Mauritania that I want to get to. Otherwise, I would have just gotten here and like, hey, there's a quest. I'm like, oh, okay, I don't know what that means. I think that's a really big part of this game's charm. I mean, I've been praising it because I'm enjoying the grinding loop, but very, like, old-school RP quests that probably took people a while to figure out when the game first came out. Found the key. Show him this bucket. Excellent adventure. As you know, I cannot risk waking that vampire in the coffin. I have water from this salve. It had been desecrated. You think you could bless it? Blessed water. That's so cool. Pour the blessed water over the coffin. Pour the blessed water over the vampire's coffin. I think you should trap him in there long enough for you to escape. Free at last. Be ensure the evil vampire is trapped for good. I'll meet you down by the monuments. Assess what damage has been done to our holy barrier by those evil Zemirakians. Cool. This is super rad. Really enjoying this. Hey, there he is. Cool. Drezzle. Things are worse than I feared. I'm not sure I'll be able to repair the damage. What's happened? She killed the guard dog to protect the engine of the monuments. The Zamorakians forced the door into the main chamber. Use some kind of evil potion on the well, which leads to the source of the river south. Spread along the entire river, disrupting the blessing placed upon it. How do we prevent that? Place a holy barrier on the entrance of this room from the south. It's not very powerful and requires me to remain here focusing on it to keep it intact. To do is find some way of removing or counteracting the evil magic that's been put in the river source of the well. Appear once again. The power I have from Sir Adelman is not great enough to cleanse an entire river. Only one idea. Sure, the mages have found some secret ore that absorbs magic into it and allows them to create runes. That must be this pure essence. Like a filter? Worth a try. 50 should be sufficient. Prachi rune essence. You have brought me notes saying I promise to pay the bearer on demand the listed number of rune essences. How is that supposed to help me? Wow, so they have actual... <laughs> uh, they have actual dialogue for when you bring the wrong item. I thought it was the wrong item too. It's kind of cool that there's a unique item, a new uh, dialogue for it. 
Okay, so I need to understand what the hell these are. Swap this note at any bank for the equivalent item. Somehow I didn't see that when I examined it before. I wonder why they do it that way. It's interesting. Maybe so you can buy them in a stack without it completely filling your inventory. Enough people must have made that mistake though for them to add the custom dialogue for it. Future watcher of this video on YouTube, you're welcome. I'm sure if you're a RuneScape fan, you've not seen that dialogue before. You probably did that with a walkthrough. And you also knew what the hell a rune essence was by the time you got this far. Okay, well I gotta run all the way back. I feel like I've made this trip like five more times than was strictly necessary. Run back to Varrock. Uh, stop at the bank, trade these in, head back. It looks like I have to make a couple trips, so... I'll just um, mute and fast forward while I do that. Back with actual roots this time. Brought you some more essences. Give them to me. Bless these stones and place them within the well. This loan should be protected once more. Please take this dagger. It's been handed down to my family for generations. With the power of Sarah Domin. You find that it has the power to prevent werewolves from adapting their wolf form in combat as long as you have it equipped. Really? That's such a flavorful thing. Completed Priest in Peril. You got a quest point, 1,406 prayer XP, the Wolfbane Dagger, and the Root to Cannabis. Which we definitely want the Root to Cannabis. And we got a prayer level up in the process. Several prayer level ups. Now I have that healing ability. Sweet! That's dope. Pumped about that. Wolfbane. I wonder if this is competitive with my current weapon. Hold up. Stab 11. Strength 5 per 10. Magic plus 1. Defense magic plus 1. So this thing gives me 20 strength, right? You just compare them to the other here. And stab 21 slash strength plus 20. And this one is more damage. This one's more accurate. Well, sort of. I guess this one has a plus 21 slash damage. That's still cool though. Keep werewolves from transforming. Sweet. Stop. Can I go through there? Well, the stab is restored. You may, but speak to me first as I have advice before you pass through. Okay, thanks. So I can pass the barrier now. Once you pass without warning, you Mauritania is an evil land told the creatures and monsters more terrifying than any you've ever yet encountered. Well, I'll pray for you. You should take some basic precautions. First place you'll come across is the werewolf trading post. Anyways, werewolves are like you and me, except never forget that they are evil vicious beasts at heart. The dagger I give you is a wolf banner as a holy relic prevents the werewolf people from changing form. If you battle with them, you keep it always equipped, for their wolf form is incredibly powerful and savage you quickly. Keep it equipped whenever I fight werewolves. That's so flavorful! I, you know, even if this game was just this grinding loop, I would like it. It would have been enough, right? But, uh... The story and the quests set up is really, really neat. 
Granted, I'll need a walkthrough to do all of it, but I don't mind that, actually. If they can make fun quests that they're, they're going to expect most of the player base to use walkthroughs for. I guess that's interesting. Maybe we'll talk about this on stream at some point. What do you think about, like, game design that specifically assumes that players are going to uh, use a walkthrough? What sort of stuff can you add to the game if you don't need to worry about them figuring it out completely on their own, right? Okay, we made it to Canifus. This is a big deal. I'm super excited. Lots and lots of work to get to this. Agility. I need to look at the timer to find when I got to 40 agility. But it was many hours of gameplay ago. Alright, let's do it. I'm gonna do it once with commentary, slow, and then uh, I'll butte and we'll just... Let me see what how much time should I be doing this for. Canifus, either 48 or 50. I'll try to look into the Apatol one if we get to 48. Yeah, so I'll mute and just do 40 to 48, fast forwarded with occasional commentary. Let's watch the beginning of it here. There's a lot of people here doing it, it looks like. Climb tree. Whoa. It's a cool little animation. Jump gap. Oh yeah, they're really showing off how much better you are at agility by the time you get to this one, huh? It's pretty cool. Very cool. Oh, I'm like... <laughs> That's so cool. Oh, I fell. Okay, well we gotta keep going until I clear it at least once. Without falling. Let me check really quick. So I unlock high-level agility obstacles. I like that animation a lot, too. Looks like this one uses a lot of uh, energy, stamina, compared to the Barbarian one. Pull vault across? That's so cool. <laughs> a little, little janky animation for it, too. I if the hell this looks different in OpenGL. I did it! One lap. Oh, it's 16 left, okay. So this is way better, because I think it ended up being 24 of the Barbarian one. Although it's also, I think it might be a little bit longer for a single lap, but that's really cool. I'm excited to do this. All right, let me clear all this stuff. Have it be agility only, that God intended. And let's do this for hours. Back if anything interesting happens. Oh cool, I forgot about Marks of Grace, because they weren't in the uh, Barbarian one. That's exciting. So I should check for a, um, check for a bank to deposit my armor, because this is an agility course. So if I have all this weapons and armor, it's more weights, my energy will drain more. I'll check for it once I land on the ground. The long search for a bank is over. Well, that's convenient. Something cool that just occurred to me, I like that the way this game is set up, it feels like there's not really, like, a perfect set of gear that's appropriate for the whole game. There's, like, spellcasting gear that you want to use. You might not want to have any gear at all for agility tests. Melee and range are all very different. I imagine there can be encounters in this game that require you to bring multiple different sets of gear for different sorts of fights. That's really, really cool. Here comes 41! Yeah, Agility 41. So, I think the XP per hour is way better than the Barbarian post. Not that it was necessarily worth doing all of that questing, although it's nice to be here now. Uh, I think earlier, someone already commented about this, I'm sure, but earlier I mentioned, hey, it's weird that only cooking tells you what happens whenever you gotta level up. 
I think it's just because I haven't been clicking click to continue to see what the next message is. I've just been moving on to the next thing, by like attacking again or clicking the next jumping node. Anyway, this is faster than the Barbarian Outpost XP per hour wise, even though it's a longer course. Also, it gets Marks of Grace, so that's nice. Uh, but I can really start to see the amount of XP per level starting to climb. That's cool. I don't got anything going on. Also, Big Red Japan is here giving me a wave. Thanks, man. Appreciate that. Back to work. Oh my god, I've fallen like four times. It's really messing with my XP per hour. It's very painful. Hopefully it gets easier over time. That was a werewolf attacking me. I might need to go back and get my werewolf dagger. I didn't think that was going to be a thing. Because it is Canifus, right? It's kind of cool that the town is populated by werewolves that leave you alone until they transform. Nice. Oh my god, I keep falling on this one jump. It's driving me crazy. Here comes 42. Meaning of life, the universe, and everything. I think falling there is the worst because it's so close to the end. You lose the lap XP. Ugh. It's the worst, I'll tell you right now. Twice in a row. It hurts. It hurts. If it was like the second jump, that would be one thing, but it's right before the end. Three times in a row. I have a feel. This can't be normal, right? I'm just really unlucky today. Ugh. Getting all excited to announce level 43, and then I fell at that point again. Woof. There it is, 43 agility, 7 to go until we have double the regeneration rate of a agility 1 character, and until we can be done with Canifus and go to Falador. Although I might take a look at the one at 48, right? There's a... Uh, Ape Atoll agility course. Keep an eye out for it, I guess. I feel like you get a ton of Marks of Grace in this one. Hey, random event. Beekeeper. Need some help with the beehive. I'll help you. Give me a hand with this beehive. Let's put together. One take a minute. I need to change from what I was doing anyway. Let's get started. Click on a piece to stop it spinning. Move it into place using the arrow buttons at the bottom of the screen. The cable roof part on top, the legs at the bottom, the two body bits in the middle. Okay, gable roof part on the top, legs on the bottom, body bits in the middle, door goes above the legs, part without goes beneath the roof. Yeah, I am confused. Sample. Oh, I see. Let's see why a computer might struggle with that. can't get the leg piece. This is weird. Really interested in how they came up with some of these mini games, right? I don't know if I'm supposed to build each time I lock one in or what the deal is, but I'll keep playing around with it. 
That's not right. Look out, bees. Ah, I'm covered in bees. Okay. You have to flee from the bees. Bummer. I don't really understand how I was supposed to construct it. I guess next time I'll uh, Google it or something. It's too bad. Interesting concept. <gasps> Did not realize we were at time. Utility 44. I was in complete zen mode. Huzzah! I may have been off mute for a really long time without realizing it as well, but... Probably wasn't too bad, mostly just clicking. I don't think I was, like, belching or <laughs> making a bunch of other sounds. We'll see. Maybe I'll do some uh, editing of the VOD. I was just in super zen mode. Did not even, like, eyes had glazed over. <laughs> like, there's so many uh, laps now to get a single level that... I just heard the effect. I was like, whoa, what? Jilly level up? That's a thing? I could level up? <laughs> um, what was I going to say? 44 is exciting though, because... Four more. I don't think we'll get to 48 or 50 tonight. It's getting pretty late. Just noticed that the timestamps in the chat menu can give away how late I'm staying up to do this. Is it shameful? It's okay. My wife's out of town this week, and I actually don't have babysitting duty in the mornings for the rest of the week, so I can sleep in a bit. Gotta take advantage of it while I can, right? I really should figure out what I can do with Marks of Grace. Somebody in the Twitch chat when we were doing the live stream said that you can get money out of them, but maybe we'll look for the rogues den once I finish agility training. Back from grabbing a drink real quick. Agility 45. Halfway to 50. Three more until we can maybe check out the uh, the 48 one. We'll see. This one's very zen. Because you can do the whole thing without ever moving the camera. I think that's actually going to be a good stopping point for me for now. <laughs> Pick this up probably next time I can play. My plan again is to focus agility, agility, agility until at least 50. I might branch out after 50, possibly 60 though, and it seems like 70 is like a really solid stopping point. Uh, so we'll look at some tasks and see what's available. Definitely at least finish getting the 50 on the next session. Thanks, folks. All right, it's another day, so it's time for more grinding. Remember the uh, timer this time. Let's go. Just out of curiosity, I was looking into that Ape Atoll thing. Looks like it's on an island, though, so I don't know if I can access it. I don't know where I would go to check to see if I can access it. I might Google it like we did with the Barbarian Outpost. Do that later. Here it comes. 46 agility. There it is. My favorite fanfare theme is the agility pop-up. <laughs> Alright, on to 47. Oh, woof, I just saw 29 left. All right, we're getting into the, we're getting into the rough grind. I think it's still on the, the territory of doable, but that is a very large number. <laughs> Especially if I keep falling. Speaking of which, the rains of pours, that drop right there is, it feels so bad. If it was, if it was on the pole vault, it wouldn't feel quite as bad. That feels like a free jump there. Three in a row. Oh, it hurts. It's so painful. Hey, new random event. Mysterious old man. Would you like to solve a maze for me? Sure. Pausing the thing I'm watching. Sure, I like exploring mazes. 
Getting as far as possible, as fast as possible. Music's kind of cool. There's chests along the way, too. Wonder if you're meant to skip those up. I'm mostly looking for doors, right? Air rooms. Maybe I do want the chests, essentially. The music in here is pretty sweet. I do like the random events. Happen like just often enough to not be frustrating. The layout makes it really hard to see where you can and can't go, right? That's the right way. It's gotta be the right way. Hold on. So I can keep running through here, right? Now I hit a wall. Oh, I see this is past a wall. Should've kept going this way earlier. Oh, well. I get infinite stamina in here, which is nice. I like when time limit songs and video games have a TikTok sound in the background. Cool. Best I could have solved it. Strange shrine. Tell me. Oh, right on. Coal, by order, air runes, a bunch of feathers, some death runes. Right on. That's fun. Alright, uh, back, back to each Comes 47 agility. It's getting slow now. Alright, let's push 48 and then I'll do some research about this new course that that unlocks. Whoops, I started to mess with my OS Buddy 64 settings while I was, uh... ...doing the course, and it looks like I crashed it, so hopefully I can fix it here. Here it comes, it's all led up to this. 48 agility, fantastic. All right, I think I'm gonna take a short break and then I'm going to research if we can do the 48 agility course or if we have to stay here for another two levels to get to 50. See you in a bit. 
All right, we're back. Um, I was just making some breakfast. While I was doing that, I was researching this ape course. It doesn't seem like it's gonna be possible, or at least it would require way too much work for two levels of agility. Uh, I think I have to have like 85 or higher combat to be able to do the prerequisites to attempt the course. So we'll finish doing this cannabis course at least to level 50. Uh, while I was researching, I also checked what Marks of Grace do, how I can go and uh, redeem them. I wasn't sure if I would have access to that area, but I think I do. Um, and it looks like if I turn in Marks of Grace, I can get an outfit that increases my run energy regeneration, which sounds amazing. Energy regeneration is like the most important thing in a, to me in a game like this, so. Uh, I think after we hit 50, my plan is to go ahead and find the Rogue's Den to turn in the Marks of Grace. Um, and then I might check out the Falador agility course. We'll see how long it takes to get one level. I might be able to be okay with 50 agility for a while. It seems like that's a pretty significant milestone. Um, maybe do a little bit of something else and then long-term goal go to Falador to go from 50 to 60. I think that makes sense. So let's, uh, let's push to 49 and 50. Remembering to turn on the timer. There we go. Ooh, we got a genie. I kind of know what these things are. They are, Mr. Smellalai. Glad you summoned me. Take this lamp and make your wish. Cool. Yeah, so I think that the random event that gave you a genie is the way that <coughs> Swamp Ledix trained a couple skills that he couldn't have trained otherwise. Very, very slowly, over hundreds of hours. So I guess I can use that to get a bunch of XP to his skill. I'll have to figure out which one I'm going to pick. I'll probably deposit it and take a while to make a decision. But that's pretty cool. There's 49 agility. All right, so I think we're gonna finish up 50 agility. I was gonna try to do this in sections of eight hours. We did, the first one was eight and an hour stream, then an eight hour episode. I think we're gonna go a little bit over the 24 hour marker there, but uh, we'll, we'll cut this off once we get to 50 agility. I think it's like 40 minutes to a level right now. Maybe a little bit more than that. taunting me. I'm so close to 50. I keep falling before I can finish a lap. It's the worst. One more lap! This is super exciting. Don't fall. Don't fall. Alright. We got it. Here it is. Oh, man. All this work. Hell yes. 50 agility. We now run at double the speed of a agility 1 character. Or no, that's not actually true. <laughs> we regenerate energy at double the speed of an agility 1 character. A major milestone. Okay. So, 
that was the third eight hour block. It went about 23 minutes over, but that's okay. I just want to make sure that we have a clear theme and goal in each one of these edited episodes. Um, going forward, I think the next episode we're going to check out the Falador agility course. Let me double check and make sure that that's actually unlocked. I think it is. Yeah. Now let me look at the agility guide to see what's after Falador. Which is a wilderness course at 52. I think that's the one that uh, Chaos Factor was telling me about. So, yeah, I think we'll go ahead and do Falador to 52, and then see how the Wilderness course works out at 52. And then from there, we've got all kinds of other skills to check out. I feel like the sky's the limit, and I could pick whatever skill I want, or just play this game, you know, whatever interests me in the moment, once I have agility to the point, to like, what I would consider the soft cap for me. I won't be stressing out constantly that I'm not moving fast enough in between objectives or waiting too long for my stamina to regen. So thanks for watching. Uh, next one, we'll start off at Falador, and maybe we'll check out the Wilderness Course. See ya.